Good afternoon. It's uh, Monday afternoon. It's Acoustic Paradiso here on Anderton's TV. I am Ben, and you were just listening to me play this Martin Grand Performer. And you can see I've got this uh, Shaw SM81 microphone here. And everyone, I think, is in agreement that the nicest sound you can get from an acoustic guitar if you're recording it or playing it live is through a mic. That's the, the ideal. Of course, it's incredibly impractical most of the time when you're playing live. But there are options, and what you just heard was not me playing through this microphone, it was me playing through this Tone Dexter from Audio Sprockets, which is an acoustic preamp, and kind of, it's, it's almost like a guitar modeler, except you're modeling your own guitar. Um, let me tell you what I mean. The Tone Dexter uses impulse responses, which they call wave maps, and you plug your guitar in using the pickup, a piezo kind of under saddle. I think this is fitted with um, a Fishman Matrix VT, um, which is, you know, standard under saddle piezo pickup. And that sounds on its own like this. I've got an AB switch down here. I'm playing through this uh, in the room here. This is not what you're hearing, but this is just for me to monitor on. The Fishman uh, SA330X, um, currently an epic deal on the site with nearly a thousand pounds off. I think it's 998 pounds off. So it's now 899 for this, which comes with this, this column and this sub and the pole and an extra stand and stuff. Um, it's a great little kind of compact PA system. Anyway, let me, let me compare the piezo sound to the sound I was getting from the Tone Dexter and then I'll tell you how I got the sound from the Tone Dexter. <laughs> That piezo sound we all know and love? Maybe not. Uh, and this is the Tone Dexter. <laughs> Sounds a lot more natural. And um, the way that you do this, you have to teach the Tone Dexter uh, what your guitar sounds like. And I'll just go through it now. Rather than telling you all about it, I'll just show you. So, I've got this uh, this Shaw, it's an SM81. It's not an expensive microphone. And that plugs in the back here. Excuse that noise. Uh, I've got a headphone socket here so I can hear what's going on when I go into teaching mode, which is when you're kind of training, you're training the Tone Dexter and what to look for in the sound. <clears throat> And what we're doing here is the, the impulse responses are, they're kind of to, to make up the difference between what you're giving the Tone Dexter from the pickup and what it's hearing in the microphone. It's kind of filling in the gaps of your, of your sound. So I'll go to a new memory slot. Let's go for slot 10, because it's nice and easy to remember. It's got 22 internal memory slots. There's also an SD card slot on the side if you need kind of extra, or you can also use that for importing and exporting other wave maps. So I'm just gonna put my headphones on so I can hear. And we're gonna go into training mode. So I hit the mute button, then I hit this, and it shows level here. So we're gonna set a level first, just play some long chords. When the display changes, that means the levels are set for the microphone and the pickup, and we're going into the training mode. I like to switch it to this, which means I can hear the microphone in here, and we've split the headphone output, so now you should be able to hear my headphone output here. I'm going to play some long-held chords and see how the uh, Tone Dexter gets on. So.
So there we go. You saw it go there through uh, nine different filters where it takes kind of nine some things. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure of the technology. Uh, so now it's measured the microphone, it's measured the pickup, the difference between the two. We can audition those. If I put my headphones back on, this is the, the kind of, this is the map. This one here is the microphone. And here is the original pickup. Uh, I'm going to store it just by holding the boost button. And now I should be able to hear it in the Fishman. And here we go. So. Just so you can compare that to the piezo we had before. Here's the tone map. Sorry, the wave map. <clears throat> and uh, that's it, basically, which makes it sound a lot, um, a lot easier than it is. It does take some experimentation with microphones, mic positioning, uh, distance, the room you're in. <laughs> you can get really kind of deep into it. Uh, we tried a whole bunch of mics before we settled on this one. We went through a, a Neumann KM184. Um, uh, an AKG214, we even got a U87 out for it. But actually this um, Shaw SM81 gave us the best sound. Um, so let me tell you a bit more about this box because it's, you know, it's designed for live performance. So as well as the impulse response and wave map side of things, you've also got a really useful acoustic preamp. Um, so look, let's start on the top here. Pickup level is the trim, that's pretty obvious. It's got the three LEDs to show you what your input level is and how hot it is. The wave map knob selects through the different impulse responses. I preferred the first one we did off air, isn't it? Channel eight. The character knob <clears throat> is adjusting how much of the wave map is blended in with the piezo signal. So if I take it all the way down anti-clockwise, that gives us the, the smallest amount of blend, which is 30% of the wave map, 70% of the pickup. Sounds like this. Blend in a bit more of the wave map now. So let's take it up to, what's that, 70 or thereabouts. The controls are a little, there we go, 70, oh, 71, it's close enough. When you get the character knob up halfway, then we're in a position where we've got 50-50 split between the piezo signal and the microphone wave map. So here we go. If I move it further round, um, even further clockwise, you enter these, which are the character settings. So you've got character zero, character one, and character two. And the further you move the, uh, the knob round, the more of those you get. So let's take character zero up to the top of its range, which is there. Move it to character one. Take that pretty much all the way. Character one is generally my favorite setting on this. Just, you know, for what that's worth. <laughs> so here we go. Oh, I forgot to unplug the microphone. Let me mute that before I do that. Not that it comes through when you're doing that, but just to keep it out of the system so people don't think we're cheating. into character two we'll kind of we'll get halfway through character two and then I'll turn it all the way up I'm going to turn it all the way up now
just to compare and contrast, I'm going to play something similar to that. I'm going to switch between the Tone Dexter and the um, Straight DI. So we'll start with the Tone Dexter. To the piezo. Back to the Tone Dexter. Piazza. It's a uh, Tone Dexter. So there you go. It's it's a subtle effect, but the biggest thing I notice when I'm using it is that all of a sudden I go from feeling like I'm playing an acoustic guitar plugged in to just feeling like I'm playing an acoustic guitar, which is a big difference because it it kind of um, though uh, piezos are renowned for compressing the sound in a way that is kind of unnatural to the way an acoustic guitar behaves. But they're practical and they sound okay, so they're good for gigs and stuff. But I think using something like this means that you can have the practicality of the piezo, but also it brings in enough of the guitar's character to make it sound more like a, a real acoustic guitar, which is the real aim of things, isn't it? Um, so I, I really like it. Uh, let me go over some of the more kind of standard preamp things that it does as well. Here you can see you've got treble and um, bass and you've got up to, what's that, 9 dB of boost and cut there. Um, you can tell where they're engaged because the light comes on. And those stay, those are kind of global controls. You can't save them with the wave maps or anything. The, the wave map is independent of the tone. It's got a notch filter, which tells you the frequency you're at, which is nice and useful for when you're live. Your output level knob here controls the output level of the quarter inch jack and it can control the output of the DI as well. There's a switch on the back for um, fixed or variable output level for this. Um, as well as using it for programming and stuff, this switch is a boost switch which gives you up to 8 dB of gain adjustable on this control at the back. So look here. You've got an effects loop. Works on a TRS cable, so tip I think is send, uh, ring is receive. Pretty standard. Uh, power supply, headphone out, headphone level. Um, option A and B is for the internal memory, because as I said, there's 22 internal memory slots. You've got 11 on A, 11 on B. That's all it is. Again, all updatable uh, via the SD card slot on the side. And then the only other, in, uh, oh, there's two more switches on it. Sorry, there's the, the microphone input for when you're training uh, the Tone Dexter with your guitar. And there's a phase switch which again, when you're training the guitar, you can change the phase of the microphone so that it sounds best in combination with the pickup because that's what you're hearing through the headphones. Um, when I say best, you're looking for the position of that switch which gives you the most bass response when you're listening. That's, that's all it is. The firmware is updatable via this SD card slot as well as guitars. Uh, they do special firmware with frequencies and kind of envelopes or whatever tuned to higher pitched and lower pitched instruments. So if you play the guitar, but you also play mandolin uh, or fiddle or double bass, you can, you can use this for all acoustic instruments. It's not just for guitars and there's, you know, especially optimized firmware for that, which is great. It's not cheap, but if you've spent lots of money on your guitar and then you plug it in and it sounds like a completely different guitar, it's definitely worth looking into. I'm, I'm a big fan. I really am. Um, the learning curve, it t doesn't take long to learn how to use it, but then it can take quite a while to get a sound you're happy with. But, you know, it's trial and error, and the more you do it, the quicker you get. So, so there we go. That is the Tone Dexter from Audio Sprockets. Uh, I think retail on it is 419. As ever, the links and specifications are below. I'm a, I'm a big fan of it. It's, I've, had it, I've been lucky, I took it home for a week <laughs> to play with and um, I've been using it on all my guitars at home. 
It's great. It's not an instant, that you're not gonna take it home, plug it in and instantly sound brilliant. But if you take it home, plug it in, fiddle with it for a few hours, try out a few different microphones, maybe go and speak nicely to your local recording studio and see if you can book a couple of hours to go and take wave maps of all their mics, then that's good. But um, yeah, in the meantime, here's the Tone Dexter. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and uh, thank you for watching Anderton's TV. I've been Ben, and I'll see you next time. All right.